So you want to experience high altitude trekking in the Himalayas and you're trying to decide which trek to choose from. Most people land on either Everest Base Camp or Annapurna Base Camp Trek. Lucky for you and for me, I've trekked both in the last three years. So whether you're an experienced trekker or a total beginner, this video will give you everything you need to decide if trekking to Annapurna Base Camp is right for you. But stay to the end of the video for my verdict on EBC versus ABC. And if you're new here, my name's Matt and I'm currently traveling around the world full time, aiming to see as much of the world as possible and to show other travelers like you how to experience the most in life and travel as much as possible. Welcome to the departure brief. First of all, where is Annapurna Base Camp? It is located inside the Annapurna Conservation Area in the northern region of Nepal. This iconic trek ascends to a height of 4,130 meters at the foot of Annapurna 1, the 10th highest peak in the world. To access the trek, the best option is to travel to the beautiful lakeside city of Pokhara. Best to do this a few days prior to your trek as to prepare and take in what the city has to offer. Here you'll find heaps of great food, bars, and trekking gear and very friendly people. When considering your route for the Annapurna Base Camp Trek, there are two packages typically offered. A direct return route from Jinyu to Base Camp, which takes about four to five days depending on your timeline, or there is an extended version going from Nayapal to Base Camp via Poon Hill which takes about eight to nine days. Prune Hill is a 3,200 meter peak that provides panoramic views overlooking the Annapurna range and surrounding mountain ranges. We had to check it out. We agreed on an itinerary that we eventually had to change because Jamie Lee unfortunately rolled her ankle on a loose rock which required a day and a half to rest. So the actual route we took was Day 1, Pokhara to Nayapal via Jeep, then trek to Uluri. Day 2, Uluri to Gurupani. Day 3, Gurupani to Poon Hill, then to Tadapani. Day 4, Tadapani to Chomrong. That was the day that Jamie Lee unfortunately rolled her ankle and then we had to rest on day five. Then day six, we went to Chomrong to Himalaya. Day seven was Himalaya to Annapurna Base Camp. Fun fact about Annapurna Base Camp. The tea house is a past the sign. Day eight was Annapurna Base Camp to Upper Sanua. And then the final day was Upper Sanua to Jinyu, then a Jeep back to Pokhara. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. Do you need a guide or not? The short answer is no. Although the regulations say you need a guide, I met many people doing the trek without one. However, I would highly recommend you do hire a guide and a porter for a few quick reasons. A, they provide a wealth of knowledge and can keep you safer than you can keep yourself. Remember, bad things do happen in these mountains. B, having a porter will seriously increase your enjoyment, not having to carry all of your equipment. And C, the guides and porters aren't expensive, so it is good to share the wealth, particularly if you are from a well-developed country. Take this from me, an extreme budget traveler. Accommodation on the trek was a lot better than I expected. Every tea house we stayed in had Wi-Fi available, power stations to charge your devices, hot showers if there was sun that day, and amazing food and warm cups of tea. Some even had barista standard coffee machines. If you're unsure what to pack, I've put a packing list in the description. While you're there, if you are finding this video useful, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. This will help me grow the channel. Comment if there is anything I haven't covered or you're unsure about. We went in late September and got rained on every single day at least once. If it wasn't raining, it was fairly hot, like high 20s hot. Things to consider when packing. Clothes that are 100% wool are by far the best. They are moisture wicking, can be worn in hot and cold climates and you can easily get multiple days wear out of them. A waterproof jacket and waterproof shoes are a must. Sleeping bag and down jacket for when you are close to base camp are also a must. Make sure your bag has a waterproof cover to keep your things dry. Bring portable power packs. I had two and used both of them. Also, two water bottles is a good idea. You can drink one while the other purifies. All the taps along the base camp are literally just water out of the river. Also, bring either some salt, a lighter, or a heap of band-aids for the leeches. Yes, the leeches. They were relentless on day two and day three. Now, finally, how difficult is the Annaburna base camp trek? For me, it was more of a mental challenge. I say that because the trek is mostly trekking up and downstairs. 
The most strenuous parts are sections that are uphill for an entire hour, only to then lose the altitude you've gained going back downhill. I think we went over 3,000 metres about three or four times before reaching base camp. That is why I say it's a mental challenge. All the hard work you do climbing up, you just lose it dropping straight back down. As for your fitness level, if you can walk upstairs at a moderate pace for an hour, you'll be fine on this trek. As for the altitude sickness, you don't go as high as Everest Base Camp on this trek, so it's a lot easier in that regard. But the same principles apply once you cross 3,000 meters. Go slow, drink lots of water, and bring altitude sickness tablets for you just in case you get sick. We are less than one hour from Annapurna Base Camp. Let's do it. Another cool thing that Pride has told us is right now we are standing pretty much in a fishbowl. So everywhere behind me are big mountains. I see a building! But we've got clouds. So hopefully in the morning we uh, have clear skies, which has been the case pretty much every day. And then we'll have some absolutely spectacular views. But even if we don't, Still a triumph getting this far and I'm, I'm, a, I'm thoroughly satisfied and very proud of Jamie Lee with her bad ankle. Another early morning. It's just past 5.30 and it is still cloudy. Still. But we've got some views, some views. My verdict, Annapurna Base Camp or Everest Base Camp. Both hikes are amazing. I found Everest Base Camp to be slightly harder due to the altitude. The scenery along the way to Everest Base Camp trek was second to none. But when you compare both actual base camps, Annapurna Base Camp's scenery was a lot better for me. If time is not a factor, I'd recommend you do Everest Base Camp trek First, but given it is almost five days longer than Annapurna Base Camp, if a shorter hike is what you're after, Annapurna Base Camp is still an amazing hike and one of the best treks in the world. Literally, you could even flip a coin, just do one of them, you won't regret it. Annapurna Base Camp achieved. Done. Now it's time to get back to Pokhara. Two days hiking back down the mountain. In the rain. In the rain, let's go.